Welcome to the New England Motocross Show, brought to you by Snow Pro Trailers, presented by Factory Connection and Planet Fitness. I am Travis Stewart, and this is the Busted Up Mike Treadwell. Yeah, it's good to be here. We're uh, show number three. We're, uh, we've got a lot of footage from uh, around Maine Motocross this weekend, and uh, what do we got going on? Well, we're going to start it off uh, right away, heading to the Maine Motocross Series at Bull Run. Um, Bull Run pretty pretty interesting track uh, it's it really breaks it down to, to true motocross you really got to be on your game to, to do good at Bull Run here's the main motocross series at Bull Run here's a little story that must be told here's a little story that must be told. Super Mini came off the gate with the 208 KTM of Dana Albert leading the way he would put on a charge in both motors that would ensure him the win Beyond him was Paul Mason, who scored a second overall, and making an appearance on the podium was the 237 of Joshua Schwanon. Junior Mini was handled start to finish by A.J. Garrett. He nailed the starts and got right to business on the rough bull run track. <laughs> Behind him was Lane T. Gagney on the RM85 and pressuring hard was Connor Rose sitting in third. <laughs> Connor would make a good move in the back section and take over second, but was left with too much real estate between him and Garropy and would have to settle for second. Our trackside correspondent, Autumn Bell, caught up with the Junior Mini riders. I'm here with AJ Garropy in the Junior Mini, and uh, you came out two wins today. How was it? Good. Good. Uh, you came out with first and you were in the lead the entire time. How do you feel about that? Really good. Awesome job. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm here with Connor Rowe and uh, he was in the Junior Mini. He came out second both times and uh, what do you expect for the next race? Um, I just got to get a whole shot this time. If I get a whole shot then I think I can do it. Both 125 and 250A were a shoe-in for Craig Doobie. The only competition he saw was in the 34 of Al Elliott. Early in one of the first motos, Al went down hard trying to track down the 170 of Doobie and was unable to compete in the final motos, handing the wins to the Chaplin Rider. 125B started with the 720 of Nate Baker ripping the whole shot. He welcomed himself back by leading a good amount of lap one, but could not contain Dana Gray. Dana has been unable to beat Casey Myrick all season long, but now he was given a shot at running away with it. He plugged away, trying to get away from the main cycle Honda. Behind them, Baker fell back further into the pack, but did not do so graciously. He battled hard, trying to stay close to the front of the pack. The battle in the front went on, resulting in a mistake by Gray that would put the number five in the top spot. Gray would get back up and maintain second spot. Murphy worked up from a bad start to finish third. Second moto would be more the same, only Dana Gray was out of the picture early. Now Alex Murphy stepped up to try and take down Myron. Behind them, Matt Slattery moved into the number three spot and rode strong, waiting for his shot to move up. Kimball was top five and made his way into third after Murphy had some problems and was forced out. Now Myrick had a comfortable lead and Slattery was able to get a second overall. The consistent motos by Kimball would land him in third overall. I'm here with Mike Kimball um, in the 125B. Tell me about uh, your starting and your problems getting into the third. Uh, I don't know. It's My start's been pretty horrible all day. 
I mean, I, don't, I think the clutch is pretty much gone. It's time for a new one. Anything else you want to improve in today? Uh, yeah, just conditioning. It's, uh, I'm getting pretty bad arm pump. You can tell I'm not riding nearly as good at the end of the moto. Evan Longchamps went 1-1 in the 250 B and 1-1 in the Open B to take both overalls. This was an amazing weekend for the YZ450F ride and sets himself up for a great season. Behind him, his teammate Alex Murphy was able to hold off Myrick and both motos to take second overall. Champ in the open B and he just came in first so how are you feeling? Great, uh, got out to a good start, bikes hand on mint, uh, just can't ask for a better day so far. Danny's Power Sports, appreciate all the help he's giving me, just gonna keep it up, try to get some more hole shots. I'm here with Alex Murphy in the open B and you had quite a struggle, tell me about that. Well, I got pinched in the gate but everybody stopped in the corner so I managed to get a second place start and my teammate he set an awesome pace uh, so it was hard to keep up with him and I could hear that Casey right on my butt so it kind of got me a little shaken up. He passed me down in the back section but I was able to hold it a little bit longer and got him back and able to take second place so my factory connection suspension wasn't working too good we made a couple of adjustments and now my bike's handling much better so. Alright good job! Youth A was won by Dana Gray, while Nick Breton would finish second. The Youth B class was won by the 256 of Chris Lunt, who is finally showing some consistent top finishes. The C class was dominated by Logan Register, who was taken to the big bikes well. His plans are to turn B and try to get some top finishes with the yellow plates. Zach Williams rode his 100 well against the big bikes pulling a second in the youth class. The female class was won by Brittany Gagney. She took the whole shot and walked away from the competition. We're here with Brittany Gagney in the women's class. Uh, she won both motos today. Uh, you had a pretty good lead and no competition. How do you feel about that? Um, pretty good. The track was good. My bike was running really good. Um, I think my dad and my grandparents uh, might got you trucking. And it was just a good day for me. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, coming off of the main motocross series at Bull Run, Evan Longchamps looked like a, a strong favorite for all B classes. Uh, he's riding that 450 uh, Yamaha, Danny's Power Sports Yamaha. Tell me, you know, you've seen Evan ride too. He, he's really strong. Do you think he could, you know, go into like, let's say an NESC or, you know, the bigger races and run with the big dogs? Well, the top guys, I think, in that, in the B class, in the main series anyway, the top few guys are, are going really fast, you know. So I think that they could probably jump into the B class in NESC and do well. I mean, no one's going to touch Jimmy and, and uh, Drew Torrance and guys like that. Um, they're, they're in a league of their own right now. But as far as being top five, I think that they could, they could jump in and, and, and do some damage you know, at, at the bigger races. Well, coming up in the show, we will be able to show you uh, just what that's like when the, when the main motocross series guys jump into the NESC, because we have that coming up. Uh, we're going to head into the main motocross series at Hemans. Uh, it was the Saturday event of this past weekend. Here's some of the action from that race. Hemans Motocross Park was rounds for the fourth main series race and we'll start this one off with the biggest race on the track, the 125B class. Right off the bat, Dana Gray was given another shot at walking away from the number five of Casey Myrick. Behind them, it was Lunt and Dorso trying to make up ground. The pace was set high at the beginning of this one, and Gray was ready for the challenge. He handled his own until finally he gave in to Casey 
handed over the lead. After this, he hung close to Myron, keeping him honest in every section of the track. Lunt put in an impressive ride, but even more impressive was the drive through the pack that the 831 Rave X rider Matt Slattery made. He battled through and put himself into position for a podium overall. Second moto saw Casey out front again and Dana having to settle for second. Matt lost the podium spot to Lunt. On the final jump, Slattery held it on, over jumped the finish line by about 30 feet in order to take third overall. Matt is no puppy and will lay it on the line whenever he needs to win. Autumn caught up with the top three. Do you think you can keep this up all year? Yeah, I've been running pretty good. I ride about three days a week, so keep training hard. I'm here at Dana, Dana Gray in the 125B number 92. Uh, tell me a little about the race. Oh, it's getting rough out there, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, and been training real hard so I can keep consistent all year long, and hopefully I'll do good. So Casey's putting on a pretty good battle out there. Uh, do you see anything happening different in the future with you? Oh, I just gotta train harder and work, work out and do whatever I can do to stay with him. And I think I can do it, hopefully later in the season. Definitely. Any uh, sponsors you want to give a shout out to? Main Cycle, Monster Energy. Here with Matt Slattery in the 125B, uh, had a pretty good battle, fell, yeah. fell once, uh, and you came back with a really good battle. Tell me about that. Uh, I think I've fallen like every moto today. I find myself on the side of the track. Falling over, but it's uh, it's kind of my style. <laughs> I like to come from the back. But I got third, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I thought I was gonna have Chris on, but he kind of came from nowhere. I think I passed him on the finish line jump. The Central Maine Power Sports ride of Al Elliott went uncontested in the A class, as he was the only one to sign up. Good job, Al. Way to be. Super Mini would go to the 208 of Dana Albert, who would have to earn it this time from Maloney. Albert would win the overall, and the 45 of Freeman would pull out second. Moto 1 of the 250B would set Evan Longchamps up for a rough day. While Adam Blay took over the early lead, Evan got caught up in a first corner collision that would put him in the back of the pack. It went Blay, Pepper, and Kimball to start it out. But watch the comeback that Evan would put on. He would make pass after pass, getting around the whole pack to put him in third. At this point, Kimball would make his move into the number one spot, and Longchamps would try to follow. But after missing a rut, Blay got back into the second position. In Moto2, Evan would leave from start to finish, but all Kimball had to do in this one was finish second. He did so easily, scoring the overall win with a 1-2. Two fifty B would show more troubles for Evan. This time teammate Kyle Harder was in the mix, but even when the two got together, they still could not hold off Casey Myron. Casey would get by the two and win the overall. Good. It's 
hard to pass some 450s out there though. And any uh, sponsors? Yeah, T-Main Cycle, Monster Energy, Spectral Oils, and Heaven's Moment Crossfire. Yeah, I uh, got a good hole shot as a second, but I couldn't make the pass and I uh, bobbled on one corner. Meyer got by me, took the lead for the uh, overall. So uh, I'll take the second overall, but not as good as I wanted to do. <laughs> Are you feeling confident in your next race? Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, definitely. It's 15-2. Uh, gonna push it as hard as I can and see what, see what I can do. Here with Kyle Harder and the uh, Open B. Um, tell me how it feels to be on the podium. Uh, feels real good. Uh, I just got a new bike and I love it. Um, hooking up on hole shots. This kid right here and uh, just it's been great. I, I'm having fun out here. Grant Carter won the Vet Open with the only pressure coming from Jack Camille. Jack kept himself honest, but never got to show a wheel on the 189. The fight for third was a good one with Steve Blaze and Matt Jenrin going at it. Blaze would take third in the moto, but third overall would go to Jenrin. Here with Steve Blaze in the vet class um, so you had a pretty harsh battle tell me about that yeah just trying to keep this old man in shape uh, got another battle in 30b with a buddy of mine Matt Gender and just using the vet open to stay in shape I'm here at Jack Camilio in the vets class so you had a harsh break came in second uh, what do you think about for the next races well my big races are over today thank God uh, <laughs> four laps really isn't enough for me to get going I, I needed a few more but Grand Road good, I got second, I'm happy with that. I, I'm going home, I'm walking home anyways. I had a pretty good day today, you know, went four for four, kinda might have got a little bit lucky. Four lap motos, so kick good starts and charge for a couple and try and hold on the rest of the way. Thank you very much, any sponsors? Uh, Motorbikes Plus, that's pretty much my main sponsor and that's about it. Coming off of that main motocross series at Heeman's, uh, it, it's cool how the main motocross series is drawing a big crowd right now. Why do you think they're drawing such a big crowd? Well, the track's real good. I mean, the tracks that they have in the main motocross series are good tracks. They're, uh, they're fun tracks. Um, you know, they, they run a good organization. You know, it's, a, it's, it's well put together. Um, and having Saturday events. I mean, you're having a Saturday main series race before a Sunday NESC race. So um, guys just come up early and you know try to get a get, get a little practice on the mine at track because that's going to be coming up in a few weeks as far as uh for nesc so they, they draw definitely some um some entries that way so you know it helps plus it's you know it's, it's fun it's a good it's a good place to go it's fun and it seems like you go to an nesc race you go to an nesc race for contingency the guys are out there to win money it's it's mostly not so much a fun game you know the main motocross series there really is no contingency except for suzuki you know these guys are just out there to have fun they're out there because they love the sport um, we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with more of the new england motocross show tired of hearing the word no casco bay ford's alternative credit department will work with you and your credit situation recent bankruptcy past repossessions divorce slow pay charge-offs no problem let casco bay ford help you get your credit back on track and get you reliable transportation from our great selection of new and pre-owned cars and trucks with the best warranty in the business don't let your low credit score lower your standards come to casco bay ford's alternative credit department and get the second chance you deserve call us today or visit our website where the only no you should hear is no problem Welcome back to the New England Motocross Show, brought to you by Snow Pro Trailers, presented by Factory Connection and Planet Fitness. We're going to head off to day one of the uh, NESC race at Bull Run. It was a Saturday-Sunday event, Memorial Weekend. Here's some of that action. Scott Manchester would go uncontested in the 85A class, with the only pressure on the track coming from the 143B rider of Brian Baruby. <laughs> Ruby would win both of his motos to take first over the 167 of Zach Williams and the 79 of Dennis Payne. The junkyard pop, Ryan Dowd, would win both of his classes in the 85 seat and beat out Del Grosso. The 125A class is one to remember. Moto 1 was a showcase of how John Dowd can handle the pressure of having someone match his pace for 20 plus 2. But Moto 2 was a different story because he now would have to try and match up with the 170 of Craig Doobie. Craig started by pulling a huge hole shot. 
John would match his pace for most of this race, and both riders would make their fair share of mistakes. Behind them, DuPont had troubles, and so did Pugrat. Jake Morrison would take third overall. At the end of this one, it was Craig Duby taking the overall. Yeah. 125B was Drew Torrance's from start to finish. After coming off Texas, Drew has been a force to be reckoned with in New England and shows no sign of slowing down. Behind them, it was the number four of Alex Murphy trying to hold off the number 23 and 910 of Keegan Labonte. As Drew checked out, the racing behind him heated up. The 23 rod would make his way into second, followed by the 910, and Murphy would sit back and try to make a move for top three. When this one ended, the number 23 would take second and Murphy would have third overall. Shane Kelleher would grab a Moto 1 win in the open, but when the second gate dropped, it was the 53 of Andy Matthew making his way through the pack to take the overall win. Craig Mishu would take third in his first expert race. Open B would prove to the NESC guys that Maine has some talent in their B class. Evan Longchamp would rip a hole shot and work to stay away from the competitions. Williams would make the pass for the lead in Moto 2, but with a bad first moto, he would only end up with a score of 12th overall. Evan would battle to give himself second overall, and behind them, the pack was hungry for the top guys. There was plenty of carnage in this moto, leaving with some pretty crazy moto scores. When all was said and done, the 320 of Manchester would take the overall. The 250B easily went to the 555 of Evan Longchamps. He put in consistent motos to walk away with it. The second moto was won by Alex Garace, but he was outside of the top 10 overall. Evan will take this confidence into the rest of 2008. The 250A class was easily won by John Dowd after Doobie had issues in Moto 1 and Morrison was unable to match the veteran's pace. Okay, let's head into NESC. Day number two at Bull Run. The second day would start with the open guys. This time, Shane was able to wrap it up despite the attack put on by the 51 of Ryan Matthew. Open B was again won by the 320 of Scott Manchester. He would also take a win in the 85A class. Sade Allender was back from Pennsylvania to maintain her fight for an NESC championship. Sade and the number four of Jen Mead would battle briefly, but Allender would pull out the overall. This time in the Youth A class, Torrance would have to battle for this win, as Manchester got away with it early. The 320 would cross the finish line first in Moto 1, but Torrance would pick it up in Moto 2 for the overall. Youth B was another showing of the new and improved Chris Lunt, as he would take both Moto wins showing he can bang bars with the top riders in New England.
125 and 250A was handled by Craig Doobie. Both Dowd and KJ did not attend day two, so Craig matched his pace from the day before and won all of his motos. Behind him, Morrison and Pugrab had some good battles, but could not tame the 170. Pro expert, uh, tough break coming in third. Uh, how'd the race go out there? It went pretty good. Uh, rode smooth and was catching up, but just it ran out of time. All right, any uh, shout outs to your sponsors? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Team Green Kawasaki, Coastline Motorsports, JP3 Graphics, and uh, that's it. I'm here with Mike Pugrab and the 125 Pro expert. Uh, what happened out there? Uh, I don't know. I got passed. I just not very good at this track. Craig was flying and. Uh, I don't know. It's a good moto because I pretty pretty good considering the other motos I've had past weekend, having some bad luck, some bike problems and stuff. But I'll take it. It's good. All right. Uh, any shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, I think Chaplin, Kawasaki, Factory Connection, Truly Designs, Spy, and that's about it. All right. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I ended up uh, falling a couple times, but uh, I fell the first time and Mike got by me and uh, I don't know, he's going good. It's I just making a lot of mistakes out there. I don't know. Try to work on it for next moto. The 125C class was won by Logan Register. The number 16 of Danny Duran threw away his shot late in moto 2 when he hit the dirt hard. Second overall went to the 829 of Michael Ward. That's going to do it for us. Again, special thanks to Snow Pro Trailers, Cargo Pro Trailers. Uh, and the show is always presented by Factory Connection and Planet Fitness. Thank you to all you guys, and thanks for all your support, New England. We're getting a good, uh, some good comments, some good feedback from all you guys. Yeah. This is going to do it for us. This was the New England Motocross Show. And uh, maybe try to finish off the series with NESC.